Good morning. It is the Lord's gathering. We are here another Saturday. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the last Saturday of the month of August. It is August the 31st. Ah, what a month it has been. What a month. What a month. What a month. I am grateful that the Lord has grace. Me, humbled and humbling me for a small portion of work he has handed me. So if not did anything I've done, anything I'm doing, but I am a I am a submissive, I'm submitting, I'm yielding, and I surrender all my faculties and members to be servants of the Lord as Romans chapter 6 says that who you yield your members to, but you are servants to obey. So um, it is my desire to and what I am actively practicing with all my flaws and frailties and limitations and disabilities I am not purposing to use those things as an excuse of not to do not to be prepared and not to be present for roll call. Some of us have missed spiritual roll calls for whatever reason. I pray. We get it together. I do. I do. That we my little taking notes. And we're not going to be before you long today. Uh, the Lord has not given me a chapter in the book that we're studying to expound on this week. This week was uh, chapters. 25 to 31. I've done 25 to 30, which was yesterday. I have not done 31, which will, I will do today. And I and I said, I said, Lord, you haven't given me anything to expound on. Um, and because of that, I will not be expounding on anything because if he hasn't given me anything, I, I ain't got nothing for me, baby. But what I will do, and what I am charged to do, is go forth in our prayer, which we pray. Uh, we pray the Psalms. And I will probably read Romans chapter 6 to let him to do that. I will uh, obey the Holy Spirit. Um, So, um, the, the book of Ezekiel has 48 chapters, so we are by no means done because the month of August is concluding. The Lord has extended the consecration past August. So, September, we will continue in our consecration, covenant, prayer and consecration where we are praying twice a day, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, we will still be in the book of Ezekiel until that is concluded. And then the Lord has instructed me to complete the teaching on pride. We were not done with that um, at the end of July. 
So he wants me to conclude that in the month of September, once we have finished the book of Ezekiel. And that is what I will do. Um, also today, we will partake in the Lord's table, which is extremely sacred. Extremely sacred and not to be taken lightly. Scripture tells us to examine ourselves before we even partake in his table and the blood and body of our living because he is alive, Christ. So we're going to obey the Lord. Hallelujah. And of course, my voice is starting to crack, but it is what it is. Because it always happens to me when I come before you. So, to God be the glory. Our prayer on today will be taken from. Will be taken from Psalms 5, 12, 136, and then Psalms 90. That is what our prayer will be taken from today. Psalms 5. Give ear unto my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I. That is quite an acknowledgement of who the boss is in the life of David. This is a prayer of David. He said, Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king, and my God. So that lets me to know that one, he can do that because he obeyed the Lord as Luke 646 says, why call ye me Lord and do not the things that I say. The Amplified Says that you do not practice the things that I say. So why call you me Lord? I'm not your Lord if you do not practice my word. So David here says, You're my king and my God. For unto thee will I you know. What is prayer? Because some people don't know what pray and prayer mean. So let's look up pray first and then we'll do prayer. To act with earnestness or zeal as for a favor or for something desirable. To entreat, to supplicate, to petition, to ask as for a favor, as an application to a legitimate to worship, to address the Supreme Being with reverence, with adoration, 
confession of sins, application for mercy, and thanksgiving for blessings received. Leg legislative body. Okay, so let me read number two again. To petition, to act, as for a favor, as an application to a legislative body. Sometimes I get tongue tied and I work through dyslexia. So I thank you for your grace that you extend to me as I read and sometimes I stumble on my words. I'm not perfect, but he is. And because he is perfect, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, which is Philippians 4, 13. So I don't do this on my own strength because I would fail every single time. I do this through and by the strength of my Lord, my Savior. Jesus Christ, my King and my God. Why? Because I practice His Word. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes humanisticness, this word, not word, gets in the way. But I acknowledge Him. And I give the Lord due reverence. That's doing to his name. He woke me up today. I didn't wake myself up. And for that, I praise him. So that's what prayer is, right? Pray. That's what pray is. Now I'm going to look up prayer. Prayer, that's good, is conversing with God. This is the, the intercourse of the soul with God. Not in contemplation or meditation, but in direct address to him. Prayer may be oral or mental, because you can pray in your mind. I do that often, especially when I'm out and about. I will pray in my mind. Sometimes that prayer <laughs> ends up being oral or audibly, and I have to catch myself. People think you're talking to yourself. No, I ain't. <laughs> right. Prayer may be oral or mental, occasional or constant. Wow. You're pouring out your soul unto and before the Lord. Praying and crying to your Father, which is in heaven. I, I'm, this, this, these are the definitions. Seeking unto God and making supplication. Drawing near to God. Bowing one's knee. Taking proper posture in prayer. Uh, acceptable prayer must be sincere. Offered with reverence and godly fear, with a humble sense of one's own insignificance as creatures and of our own unworthiness as sinners, with earnest importunity and with unhesitance in submission to the divine will. Prayer must also be offered in the faith that God is and is the hearer and answerer of prayer and that he will fulfill his word. Ask and ye shall receive. Prayer 
prayer is of different kinds, secret, social, as family prayers, and in social worship and public in their service of the sanctuary. An accessory prayer is enjoined, and there are many instances on record of, ans of answers having been given to such prayers. That's my my my. Oh, I don't know why I never looked this up myself. <laughs> but I felt led to do that on today in case someone didn't know what prayer and Pray was or is or what it should look like. And then there's examples of prayer praying without ceasing, praying on night. Praying three times a day, praying twice a day, praying daily in the morning, a boldness in prayer, in joint prayer, um, secret prayer, silent prayer, weeping in prayer, praying in a loud voice, uh, long prayers, uh, yeah. things that you need to do. <laughs> Profuse prayers. Profuse prayers to be avoided. Vain repetition of prayers to be avoided. So you got your good ones and your bad ones. So this is giving you difference of things that are acceptable in prayer and things that are not acceptable in prayer. Uh, this is a good definition. I like this. I don't understand why I never bothered. I probably have, but it doesn't ring a bell to me. Prayers that are answered and uh, from promises. And my God, this is an awesome definition. My God, I'm shocked myself. Jesus. My, 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 my Lord. The doctrine of prayer as to the nature and efficacy of prayer, this, its directions as to time, place, and manner of prayer. It's type and example of prayer. Uh, the object of this article will be such and such. On, okay. So it's given different. Okay. I use uh, two different Bible um, dictionaries. This one I am using is called the King James Bible Dictionary. And that um, is everything that I have gotten. It's um, online. There is not an app. I, I looked. Uh, but there isn't an app, so it's it is online, um, and that is the definition that I got for prayer. It's conversation with the Lord. That means it's two way, not one. Right? When you're in prayer. It's between you and the Lord. There's more than one person involved in prayer. And when you pray, you're directing your prayer to something. Mm. Not to nothing. If it is done properly, Lord, thank you. My, 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 my. So hearken, I'm back to Psalms chapter 5, verse 2. Hearken unto the voice of my. Are you ever broken? Spirit. Wait, wait. 
do you ever cry? Do tears ever run down your face? Do you ever humble yourself? in prayer or are you boastful are you hardened when you come in entering conversation before the Lord now. It's one thing to come in, but don't remain that way. But there is another thing when you come in and you leave out the same, there was no change in your divine appointment with the Lord, whether it's constant, whether it's two to three times a day that you have laid aside to render unto the Lord, whether it's in the morning that you have set aside to render unto the Lord. Does he show and share with you things close to his heart? Does he show and share with you things about you personally, about people in your environment, your sphere of influence, or about a person, place, or a thing that you might not know personally. For unto thee will I. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look. So David's chosen to pray, to pray in the morning and posturing himself to look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity, some kind it was in July. And I made a statement about the Lord. God loves. And then, like the Holy Spirit put a check in. He don't love everything or everybody. And then the scripture in I believe it's Romans, I could be wrong, where he says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Just find that. I'm sorry, it's also in the New Testament. <laughs> It is uh, also uh, Micah 1, 3. Which is the last book in the Old Testament. It says, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. 
Lord, don't love everybody. I know that's a rough thing and hard to fathom and understand. It. But he's a God of love. Yeah, he is. He's also a God of righteousness, holiness, sanctification. In Romans 9, 13 says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Do you think it's just one person in the world the Lord hates? No. It's only reported one to let us know that there are those that the Lord I know it's hard to wrap your mind around such a statement. I haven't made it. The Lord has. All I'm doing is repeating it. And so we're here today because five, Psalms chapter five, verse five says, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So if you are a worker, an individual that is a worker of iniquity, the Lord hates. Hmm. I know. What's she talking about? It's in the Bible. Not to say that the Lord is. So if you are a worker actively working in the character and nature and ways of iniquity, you are not loved by the Lord. I am not taking it out of context either. Mm. Spirit, yes, I am going to go to the M. Boasters can have no standing in your sight. You abhor all evil doors. That's what the Amplified Classic says. Now, let's look up the word abhor. All right, my dictionary don't want to load. That's all right. Uh, like I told you, I use uh, two different dictionaries. Uh, the Holy Bible. Or to hate extremely, always contempt to loathe, detest, or abominate. I ain't got no reason to lie to you. That's what it says. To despise or neglect. To cast off or reject. That's what the word abhor means. So the Amplified said, Boasters can have no standing in your sight. You abhor all evil doers. That's what the Amplified said. Wow. Wow. In case you thought I was in the spirit of error. <laughs> I get that lie. I'm in the book. I ain't making up stuff. I ain't got no I, I'm not smart enough to make up stuff. I'll leave that to y'all professional. You're religious folk out there. You, you know how to do it good. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 6. Of Psalms chapter 5. This is prayer. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor hate. The bloody and deceitful man. So here we are again with something the Lord hates. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. 
So let's go to the Amplified. <laughs> Father, you will destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors and rejects the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. That is what the Amplified says. Lord, you are definitely taking today very different. <laughs> I'm just floating. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in the fear and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temples. That's how we're supposed to come to the Lord. In fear. Oh, wow. Amplify says, but as for me, I will enter your house through the abundance of your steadfast love and mercy. I will worship toward and at your holy temple in reverent fear and awe of you. We we need. He is such a vast, awesome God. It, I don't understand how we can ignore how we can ignore such. God, when we don't even have the ability to wake our own self up every day or to keep ourselves breathing during the night hour, that is divine. That is not by human effort to keep the human heart beating and yet we approach him with such disrespect and dishonor and disreverence for who he really is and you live of your deceitful dirty lying hands before I am full of iniquity and think he hears you and will give his Ear and incline his ear unto you. We are so disrespectful. Scripture tells us to come bold. Hebrews 4 and 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Amplifies says this. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor, 
to us sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and weld time help coming just when we need it. And yet David says here, in thy fear will I worship towards thy holy temple. So we don't come with a reverence or awe. Uh, what is awe to the wondering? Meaning of awe, fear mingled with admiration or reverence, reverential fear. Fear, dread, inspired by something great or terrible. So fear mingled with admiration. That's what I mean. <laughs> Eight, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward parts is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. What is a sepulcher? You ask? Let's find out together. Oh, Jesus. Sepulchre to bury, to enter, to entomb. That's what a sepulchre. A place for burying. That's what they buried Jesus in a tomb, a sepulchre. Right? No, um, I don't know if it was last week when I mentioned the the my point of view about the cross, how Jesus is no longer on the cross. And the reason why I don't wear a cross in jewelry is because he's not dead. The cross symbolizes death, dying, death. And I said, if you're going to want to represent your faith in jewelry form, why can't we get a sepulchre, a tomb? with the door rolled away, symbolizing resurrection. With the door rolled away, symbolizing resurrection. Why can't we, I said, complete the scene? But the world wants Jesus still on the cross and dead. Because if so, then there is no salvation. He's alive and well in Romans chapter six clearly tells us that he only died once. He ain't died no more. He accomplished the cross. He accomplished the grave. Right? My father, my king, my God. So their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. That is why I disdain flattery. Nothing but deceit. 
the software. It's deceit and manipulation. I don't trust it. Destroy thou them, O oh God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against me. I like the prayers of David. He gets straight into the point. My husband mentioned that uh, yesterday when he and I were having our prayer and he mentioned the fact that the prayers of david are very different than the other um uh, of authors in the book of psalms david is straight and to the point he doesn't hold back punches and let me just share something he's honest because that's what came to me when my husband was talking about the difference with David's prayer. He's honest in his prayer. In his praying. He didn't, you know, placate and cover up. Well, Lauren, you know, he didn't play. He was honest about how he felt. Are you honest when you come before the Lord in prayer? About how you really feel about a person, about a place, and a thing? Are you religious in your prayer? Something to think about. Because that's what the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees were. Jesus said, you make these long, drawn-out prayers that don't even reach heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prayer full of empty words. No weight to them. Because they're not honest. David's prayers were honest and from his heart. Are we just giving a lip service? That's why Lord don't answer you. Because you're a liar. Even in your prayer. You're a liar even in your prayer. Oh, I said it. You're a liar even in your prayer. I ain't scared of you. I got angels back in me. And I say that with confidence, boldness, and humility. Ooh, David. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest <laughs> them. The Lord is my defender. He told me in 2023, April, May. Don't defend yourself. I am your defender. I got to tell you, that has not always been easy. I be wanting to give back to folk what they done gave the dish out to me with scripture. And every time I think to do that, the Lord says, well, then you've already, you haven't allowed me to defend you. You've, you've already done it. So there's nothing for me to do. You've done it out of your, and, and at the end of the day, it's done out of my flesh. Because scripture tells me not to render evil. For evil. First Thessalonians 5.15 See that none render evil for evil. Right? But 
ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So meaning to your church family and your non-church family. You ain't to render evil for evil. What you say, Lord? First Peter 3, 9 says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but counterwise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Help us all. But the Lord is your defender. Lord, I take my hands and mouth off stuff. I'll be wanting to go in on it. Because I'm, I'm not trying to gain an upper hand on anyone, anything. I'm not doing it. Because I fail every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield? Let the Lord be your defender today. Let him defend you. Let him be your shield. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But you got to be righteous. For the Lord will bless the righteous. He ain't blessing evildoers. And his favor will compass them as a shield. But you gotta be righteous. Righteous, you say? I've given this definition few times during studies, but I'm going to do it again for the sake of new persons. Righteous. Just according to the divine law applied to person, it denotes one who is holy in heart in observance of the divine commands in practice, meaning they're actively doing it. Remember what I said about Luke 646 in the Amplified? As a righteous man applied to things, it denotes an, um, to the divine will or to justice as in righteous acts. It is used chiefly in theology and applied to God in his testimonies to his saints. Justice, doing things rightly. I never know what the Lord's going to do. I just surrender and give. Justly in accordance with laws of justice. That's uh, righteously. Righteous purity of heart and rectitude of life. Conformity of heart and life to the divine law. Whose law? The Lord. Psalms 19 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Right? Father, you know, you know what you said. So let's go to Psalms. Sure. 
Psalms 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Ain't my word. That's why, people, it's important to know, read, and study, become intimate with and in his word through his spirit so that the Holy Spirit can bring clarity and understanding to the written word. Some of us just read it to check off a box. I read my Bible, check. But without diving into, without immersing yourself into the word, becoming intimate in and with his word. His word becoming flesh in, mm, yes, John chapter 1. The gospel of John. Yes, Holy Spirit. John 1.14, which is a traditional salvation scripture. And the word was made flesh. And dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. John 6, 63 says, this is interesting, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. That's why I said to you earlier, I can't do nothing without the Lord in Philippians 4.13. This here accompanies that. is a companion scripture. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, hallelujah, they are spirit and they are life. But if we don't read his word, we can't be quickened. By his spirit for life. We sit before the plain church. Yes, I have a godly indignation because it is an offense to the Lord and to my spirit as well. When will the things that the Lord uh, uh, abhor or whore you? When will the things the Lord detest, detest you? When will the things that bother the Lord bother you? As I said the last two times, a compromise Christian compromises. There's no room or space for compromises at this house. Is another good one. <laughs> Second Peter two eighteen. Lord, you speaking today? For when they speak great swelling words, you know, flattery, a vanity, they allure through the lust of their flesh. There's their witchcraft working in manip manipulation. Through much wantiness, those that were clean escaped, escaped from them who live in error. We want to play church. <laughs> it's not church. Might not like it here, but I can surely tell you this medicine is good for you. 
might not taste good going down. It's going to bring some healing to that inner man, to the spirit, to the soul, and to the body. First Thessalonians 5.23 I pray God your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord. I believe this word in and I am grateful for different mentors and teachers in my life, different developmental stages that demanded, and I mean demand in a good way, and required of us to not just read the word, but study and commit it to memory. Because what else can the Holy Spirit bring up to your remembrance if it's nothing, if your well is empty, if there's nothing to bring up? We gotta fill the well with the word. And we gotta keep it filled. Because then when this enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up and say, What do you think the standard is? His word. That is in the book of Isaiah. Fifty-nine. I like nineteen through twenty-one. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Who's him? The enemy. What's the standard? The word. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, save the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them. With them the who? Turn from their transgression. My spirit that I put upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord. From henceforth. Excuse me, henceforth and forever. So we're talking about what three generations. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's go to our next prayer. <laughs> Psalms 12. Oh my, my. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful fail from the children of men. They speak vanity, lying. Everyone with his neighbor, with, here we go, flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Uh, our lips are our own. 
who's Lord over us? So who's the boss? This is my body. I can do what I want. I can say whatever I want. But my mom ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Guess what, sir? Guess what, ma'am? God going to do with you because he's the boss at the end of the day. Who have said, with our tongue, we will prevail. We will win. We will win. We won't lose. We got this. I got this. Our lips are our own. I don't know why people don't want to read the Bible. The Bible is so relevant today. So relevant today. It's not even funny. Not even funny. Oh, Psalms 12. I said 12, not 14. Hmm. I'm going to read it in an amplified. Amplified Psalms 12, 4. Those who say with our tongues we prevail, our lips are our own to command at our will, who is Lord and master over us. <laughs> what you say? Who is Lord and master? Over us. Who's our boss? I'm my own boss. Like you say, this is my body. I can do whatever I want with it. Mm. Mm. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. Because the oppression of the poor, and because the needy is sighing, the needy is tired, the needy is wailing. The needy is, is, is faint in their spirit. Now I'm going to show my hand. I'm going to show them who's Lord and master. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. So the Lord's going to say, you know what? The poor and the, and the, and the needy. I'm going to put you in safety. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to shield you. I'm your defender from those that puff at you. For those that have uh, words of, the, of a destructive nature, of a perverse nature. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times what did the words of the lord are pure the amplifier says the words and promises of the lord are pure words like silver refined in a earthen furnace purified seven times Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Yes, let me tell you. And they are growing in multitudes. Vilest men. Vilest. What, what, let, let, let's look up that word. Vile. Let's get an understanding of the Bible. Baseless, meanness, moral baseness, baseness or depravity. De de degradation by sin, extreme wickedness. That's what violence means. My God. Be sick in the church. church. Basement. Meanness. The wicked walk on every side when violence men are exalted. What does the amplifier say? The wicked walk. Or prowl about on every side as 
vilest vileness is exalted and baseness is rated high among the sons of men. Is that not relevant today? I'm going to read it again in the Amplified. The wicked walk or prowl about on every side as vileness is exalted and baseness is rated high among the sons of men. And unfortunately, this is the body of Christ. Vileness begets vile. vile. Lying begets right. That's why perfect health and your spirit. What he said to me, and I have said many times that like spirits attract like spirits. If you're base, you're gonna attract base. If you're vile, you're going to attract vile. If you're wicked, you're going to attract wicked. You are the company that you keep. Who's in your company? Who's in your circle on today? Okay, Holy Spirit. Mm. Psalms 136 says, Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Give thanks unto the God of gods, because he is, <laughs> for his mercy endureth forever. He's a God of God. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone does great wonder. <laughs> for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endures forever. Did Buddha do that? Did Muhammad do that? Let me ask you something. Has Muhammad raised from the dead? How about Buddha? I'm just asking. I'm curious. Are they still dead? Uh, to him that made great lights, for his mercy endured forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endured forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endured forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endured forever. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy endureth forever. With strong hand and with a, with, with a strong arm. For his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts. <laughs> they walked on dry ground, yo. For his mercy endureth forever. He made Israel to pass through the midst of it. For his mercy <laughs> endured forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his herd and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. For his mercy endured forever. So I got to say something here. You may be going through a dry wilderness season. But guess what? If the Lord let his people out of the wilderness, he will surely lead you out of your wilderness. Just keep your eyes stayed upon him. Keep your spiritual momentum. Do not 
stop moving. Regardless to what's on the left of you, what's on the right of you, or what's behind you. If you keep your armor on. And keep moving forward. The Lord will lead you out of your wilderness season. 1,000% of the time. Dear brother. Dear sister. Keep hard. Encourage yourself. How do you do that? In the word. That's how David encouraged him. So how do you think many songs came to be? He encouraged himself through the word. Read the word. Read the songs. Get yourself. a Because sometimes you will talk to Sister Susie or Brother William. And their words make a situation worse. And then you regret talking to them. They don't understand the season that you're in. Okay? So they don't have words to encourage you in your season. What they should have said, well, girl, a dude, bruh, get into that word. Because that's what I'm here to tell you. Get into the word and stay in the word. I'm not telling you to do something that I myself don't do, won't do, and am not doing. I have to do that. I do that. I don't have nobody in my circle to encourage me. I don't. I don't. But I have the Lord. I have his word. Seriously. I'm not just saying it to sound cute and <laughs> spiritual. I'm saying it because it is the God's honest truth. I literally have no one to encourage me. And those that claim they pray for me, I don't even know if the Lord even hears them. I'm being honest and raw and transparent. with you. I don't even ask people to pray for me anymore. I don't, because if your heart ain't right, he ain't hearing you. So what good is it if you pray for me if he ain't even hearing your personal prayer? And then with some, they pray curses. So I'm good. I'm, I'm mm, no, until the Lord decides if he chooses to bring a brother or a sister in my life that fears him and reverence him and seeks his word. Without compromise. Without compromise. Compromise, you say? A mutual promise or contract of two parties in controversy to refer their differences to the decision of arbitrators. An amicable agreement between parties in controversy to settle their differences by mutual concessions. Mutual agreement. Adjustment. To adjust and settle a difference by mutual agreement with concessions of claims by the parties. To commit, to put, to hazard, to pledge, 
by some act or declaration to agree to accord. Concessions. Conceding. Compromise to settle by agreement with mutual concessions. What does concede mean? Concede, to yield, to submit as true, just or proper, to grant, to let pass undisputed, to allow, to admit to be true. That's what concede means. So, to compromise is to yield, to admit to something that is true. To allow, to grant, to let pass undisputed. That's what compromise means. With the word con conceded, concessions. Oh. Let's look up the word concession, shall we? Because <laughs> I want to make sure I Give correctly. Concession. The act of granting or yielding, usually complying a demand, claim, or request from the party to whom it is made, and thus distinguishing from giving, which is voluntary or spontaneous. The thing yielded, as in the treaty or peace, each party made large concessions. Only thing we need to concede to is sin. We need to um, of righteousness. Sorry. Give ourselves to yield to righteousness to the things of the Lord. Those are the things we need to concede to and yield to. The things of the Lord, the things of righteousness, the things of holiness. Unfortunately, that's not what's happening. Worldly music in the body of Christ the church from the pulpit from the highest plateau being played and danced to like it's the disco or club concessions in the way women dress or men dress for that matter any and everything is permissible now holiness is a thing of yesteryear God knows my heart. He does. And he will judge you accordingly. Compromise. Christians, compromise. You got Christians living together. Man, female, men and men and women and women still come into the house of God as if everything's okay. Committing sex outside of marriage. I was guilty. I ain't talking to you about something that I have. Guilty. 
guilty, guilty, but God, who is a forgiver of sin, wants godly sorrow has taken place and repentance, confession, acknowledging what is really going on and what you're really doing and not denying it, right? Then renouncing it and then deliverance coming forth and then severing every further assets, those soul ties, each and every one needs to be dealt with. But you became one and intimate with and soul touching soul flesh touching flesh that is a spiritual act we abuse because of the lust of our flesh let me finish reading our prayer shall we Jesus. To him which smote great kings for his mercy endured forever, and slew famous kings for his mercy endured forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endured forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endured forever, and gave their land for an heritage for his mercy endured forever. Even an heritage unto Israel, his servant. For his mercy and when we're talking about Jacob, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The Lord's been changing names from 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 Genesis to, to, to Revelation. Name changing is biblical, but it's always for a purpose, not for the sake of a name change. Who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endureth forever and hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever. My, 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 my. And our last prayer is Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ah, there's a secret place. Mm -hmm. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, there's that personal a relationship thing, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Let me tell you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Uh, uh, um, Ephesians chapter 6, talking about the armor. Come on here. Okay. His truth, not yours, shall be your shield and buckler. Thou shalt not. Be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. What you say? So when he's doing the protection, those unseen things that you don't know about, you're being protected from. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. From the noise, from the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday, things you have no idea about he's doing his job a thousand shall fall at thy side and 
10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not connive thee. Do you know the darts that come against you and the, the, the people that do the astro projection, especially when they're in a, a coven, there's a group that they, they work together to come against the people of God. But he has his angels that link up and protect your ground. That's why you shouldn't have anything in or around your house that is ungodly and offensive to him. Because if you do, you ain't being protected. So the Holy Spirit will show you, Lord, what's in this house that don't belong and get rid of it. I had to do it. I still am uh, 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 making myself aware of things in my house, uh, th things that we, we just recently buy or, or things, you know, if it ain't the Lord, if it offends the Lord, if, if it is a repellent of protection, I want it out of my house because I need divine protection. So check your house, check your surroundings. Make sure there's nothing in there that the Lord can, can't say, I, you need to remove that. For me to come and abide, you need to remove something. There needs to be an exchange. You need to get rid of that if you want me. If you don't want me, bet I'm going to go. I, 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 I got other people I need to deal with to protect. You know, <coughs> a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not connive thee. So those assignments from the enemy coming against you that you have no idea about in the spirit realm, because they work non-stop. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 in our six, depending on the leap year, days of the year. But we want to play church. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Ooh, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high. Thy habitation. The Lord, is the Lord welcome in your house? Is he welcome in your physical house? And he and he walk and is he welcomed in your uh your your human your your natural house, your body? Is he welcome? Is he an inhabitant in you? There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague. Kanai thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. It didn't say some, it didn't say a few. It said they will keep you in all. Your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. That sounds like a promise to me. But you have to fit within the guidelines of this scripture. To claim it. We claim in scriptures that we do not adhere to the guidelines for. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation? Lord, I thank you for your word, which is alive and well and moving to 
from the face of the earth up and down in it. Thank you for those that are yours, that are marked, that are covered, that are protected, that are defended by you, I thank you. Because you are the God of God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord, I will read that in the Amplified. Romans chapter 6. I am going to read the purposes for these gatherings. God is good, God. God is good. Ah, to provoke, to stir up, to expose, to renew, to reprove, for resuscitation, to restore, to bring edification, to bring exhortation, to bring correction, to rebuke, to build and rebuild, to destroy and tear down, for training, for equipping, for sharpening, but you got to sharpen with iron, not plastic, for demonstrating the love of Christ in whatever way that looks, for accuracy, for godly separation when needed, for deliverance, for spiritual and natural growth, for setting godly order, for spiritual and natural development, not providing an environment for fostering and incubating excuses, that's not allowed here, for sifting the wheat from the chaff, for acceleration, for renouncing and closing all demonic doorways once they've been identified, okay? For encouragement to provide a place for healthy external and internal healing, to forgive um, from our hearts in the form of letting go, to lose, to release those that have wronged us, hurt us, abandoned us, betrayed us, and slandered us, amen? Allowing the manifestation, I'm, I'm sorry, allowing manifestations, good and bad, and dealing with them once they have been exposed and revealed to you. For exhibiting authentic Christian living, because that's far and in between, but they out there, all right? For exhibiting authentic Christ like living, yeah, uh-huh. for testing. To allow the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost to be manifested in us, upon us, and around us. Hallelujah. To operate in the signs and wonders produced by that same Holy Spirit. Becoming intimate with and in truth, which is Jesus. For activation. To walk in kingdom mindset and operation. To challenge mindsets and traditions that offend the Lord. To allow the shaking of our foundation for accountability, for reigniting the fire for kingdom purposes and our first love. To identify and tear down demonic, all of them, strongholds, amen. For spiritual house cleaning and maintenance, for transparency, even when it hurts. Anyway, for pushing and birthing, for conviction, for returning honor and fear back unto God, becoming, I'm sorry, uh, let me go back, for spiritual, I'm sorry, Mm. go down, for spiritual birthing and pushing, which is uh, the Operation of a spiritual midwife to coach or help you through uh, different birthing and pushing seasons in your life. Now, you can bring forth your own seed if you want. And sometimes, maybe the Lord will have you do that. But I know in, in, in different maturity in our spiritual growth stages, you do need a spiritual midwife. Sorry, I had to go back to correct that. 
to identify compromised postures and behaviors of complacency that causes us to become comfortable and at ease, lazy. For adjusting our focus back into on the things of the Lord. To bring awareness of our minds concerning the ways, patterns, and habits of our thinking that do not please the Lord. Reprogramming of our muscle memory from the old man to the new man, which is in Christ, which is an act of conversion. Mm -hmm. Conversion in a simple form is changing from one thing to another. Living and accepting the call and responsibility of being a Christian instead of just wanting and walking in the title of being a Christian, you know, having a form of godliness. For fruit examination, which isn't judging. To promote daily self-examination, to study the word, to become hearers and doers of the word, to be ready at all times. To be a people and children of obedience, to accept, submit, yield, surrender, and not despise discipline, the chastening of the Lord in whatever form it comes in. To be applicators and replicators of Christ in his nature, his character, his word, and his ways. De de mm, development of godly discipline in our walk of life be being examples worthy to be followed because there's a lot that aren't living and exhibiting truth which is jesus to be creative to be revived to be a, a for a resurgence for protection for preservation to cover to restore covenant to be a people of active faith to adhere to sound doctrine and to be fruitful. Those are the purposes why the Lord has us meeting because it is not church as usual. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, we serve a mighty God. Mm. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, 
the name of our Lord is to be praised. There is never a time when we should not Never. Whether you're sick or well, happy or sad, angry or there, black or in a which or there's never a time or season when we are not ready to praise the name of the Lord. I'm just looking at my my different songs that I have written here that I haven't sung yet. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your spirit dwell here with us. Let us fill your sweet embrace. Let every person leave here different. In your presence, there is change. Let your glory, let your glory, let your glory feel this place. Let your glory feel this place. Let your glory feel this place. Let your spirit dwell here with us. Let us feel your sweet embrace. Let every person leave here different because in your presence there is change. Let your glory, let your glory, let your glory feel this place. Yes, Lord. I thank you. I I thank you. I am going to read Romans chapter 6. I'm going to share two nuggets the Lord gave me this week. Both actually on the 22nd, 27th on the same day. The first one is the, the insidious nature of the power of darkness is that it doesn't feel like power, darkness. And that is how you can become swept away, become deeply involved in all forms, ways, character, and nature of the kingdom of darkness and not even know it until it's too late. So the insidious nature of the power of darkness is that it doesn't feel like the power of darkness. And so I looked up insidious. And the definition for insidious, insidious is proceeding in a gradual, subtle way, but with harmful effects. Similar words or synonyms to the word insidious is stealthy, septile, crafty, sneaky, cunning, tricky, slick, deceitful, dishonest, deceptive, indirect, backhanded. That is the nature of the kingdom of and power of darkness. And the second nugget the Lord gave me this week, I've been tuggling with nothing, you know, saying, Lord, you know, I'm nothing. And then the Holy Spirit had charged me. So Tommy goes, don't. Don't use that. You are something. You have 
value. And so in my 11 o'clock prayer, I was still struggling with nothing. And then this is what Holy Spirit gave me. You are a speck of sand. A speck of sand, though it may be small, is made with perfect design. We need to understand the design and focus on the purpose of the one speck. You, your purpose. What is your perfect in the whole scheme of a beach? I'm getting ahead of myself. It's unseen by itself, but among other specks, it's a host and makes up a beach. No two specks of sand look alike, just like no two snowflakes look alike. Each speck of sand is uniquely different from its neighbor and is barely seen with the naked eye in you to look at a speck of sand in its entirety and makeup and design you need to view it through a, a different kind of lens right through a magnifying device to see the uniqueness from one speck from another I could have slapped myself silly with that revelation. I said, Holy Spirit, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Do what you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. So in the whole scheme of things, I'm a speck of sand. Uniquely designed for a unique purpose. With other like-minded specs, which, if you will, make up the body of Christ. <laughs> oh, Lord, you is so awesome. The beach. Uh, what is it? First, our second Corinthians, when it talks about, I'm going to get to it. Hold on right here because talking about I believe the spiritual gifts hold on looking at my mic here to make sure it um, no it's 12 First Corinthians 12. You can read that on your own time. Talks about how one differs from another, but the same spirit. So first Corinthians chapter 12. So we're the beach, the body of Christ, the, the, the men and women of like mindedness. Is there going to be a remnant at this point? The beach, the body of Christ, and we each are our own little specks. Individually, just, you know, unseen. But collectively, we make up the body. Fitly joined together. To hands, to arms, to eyes, to ears, one mouth, one nose, one head. We are not disjointed and got many heads. That's foreign gods and many arms. And legs, that's foreign God. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the body the Lord is coming back for. He's coming back for a body without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, without any such thing. What that mean? Perfect baby. So no two specks of sin look alike. Nor do they feel alike.
So stop trying to be like somebody else. You were uniquely designed to be you for a unique purpose, not like somebody else. Though you may even carry a mantle from somebody else, but it's not for you to be like that other person. It's for you to be you and to operate as you are allowed and permitted to operate under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Not to be like somebody else. Elisha was not like Elijah. Though he had his mantle. Nathan was not like Samuel. Though he was his mentor. Be you, baby. Because ain't nobody else like you. So, those were the two niggas I wanted to share with you because that was profound. Shared it with my husband. He was like, oh, that's deep. (laughs) So, I'm going to read here Romans chapter 6 and then we are done for today. Amen. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Classic. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Perfect timing. I had to change my mic. I'll read uh, verse one again. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant to the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Those are questions. We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in the newness of life. Habitually, that means continually. Keep telling you he ain't dead. You better find yourself an open sepulcher. My husband, I told my husband that. He said, Bang, you need to find yourself one. And I said, Bang, I ain't. He said, No, 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 you need to find yourself an open sepulcher. I don't even think something like that exists. <laughs> Verse five For if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection. By a new life lived for God. That's why I say you're saved from something to something. You're saved from sin to life. If you've truly encountered true salvation. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil. That we might no longer be the slaves to sin. For when a man dies, he is freed, loose, delivered from the power of sin among men. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, one time, people, he's not constantly doing it. Will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. That's why I'm not wearing no cross. Because he's not dead. 
any more. And this actually goes also with Hebrews chapter 6, talking about crucifying the that uh, re to renew one to repentance again after they've crucified the Christ again? Are you for real? Read it in the Amplified. Again. Yeah, this is a camp companion scripture to Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 9 again because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. That's why God doesn't take lightly when we abuse the blood of his son. Death hath, death no longer has power over him. For by the, for by the death he died, he died to sin, ending his relation to it. Once for all and the life that he lives not lived because he's still alive he is living still living alive actively to god an unbroken fellowship with him even so consider yourself also dead to sin and your relation to it broken But alive in God, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. That is salvation from being saved. I'm sorry, from something to something. In case you thought I was in error again. Here's your scripture. <laughs> Let us not sin. Let's, I'm sorry. Let's not sin. Therefore rule. As king in your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies, to make you yield to its cravings and to be subject to its lust and evil passions. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodies, your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments, tools, my God of wickedness, but offer and yield yourself to God as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodies and members and faculties to God, presenting them as in implements of righteousness. We are saved from something to something for sin shall not any longer exert domination over you since now you are not under law as slaves but under grace as subjects of god's favor and mercy let's not abuse that men and women of god what then are we to conclude Shall we sin because we have not? I'm sorry. Let me read that again. What then are we to conclude, which is a question. Shall we sin because we live not under law, but under God's favor and mercy? Certainly not. Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourself to anyone, to do his will, you are the slave to him whom you obey, whether that be in sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, doing, I'm sorry, righteousness, right doing and right standing with God. Oh, but thank God. Though you were once slave to sin, ye have become obedient with all your heart to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and to which you were committed. Do you fall within the scripture? 
have you become obedient with all your heart to the standard and teaching that you've been instructed and given? We are saved from something to something. Thank you. Holy Spirit. And having been set free from sin, you have become the servants of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will in thought, in, pur in purpose, and action. I am speaking in familiar human terms because of your natural limitation. For, for as you yielded your bodies and members and faculties as servants to impurity and ever increasing lawlessness, so now yield your bodily members and faculties once for all as servants to righteousness, right being and doing, which leads to sanctification. Wow, Holy Spirit. For when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. But then what benefit return did you get from the things of which ye are now ashamed? None. For the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become the slave to God, changing ownership, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You're going to be a slave to somebody. Might as well be a slave to the Lord. You have your present reward in holiness. And its end is eternal life. The end of sin is death. The end of salvation is eternal life. Hallelujah. For the wages is another salvation scripture. For the wages of sin. I'm sorry. I, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the King James Version of um, Romans 6.23. And now I'm going to read it in the Amplified because I started reading the King James. I'm like, wait a minute. This is the Amplified. For the wages which sin pays is death, but the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life through in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. So you can't get it any other way but by and through Jesus Christ. I know there are plenty of actors and socialites and mega million millionaire people telling you that you can gain your salvation through other means and other ways. But as I have told you many times before, if you are trying to gain entry into the kingdom and salvation through other means other than the front door, which is John chapter 10, verse one, the gospel of John, you are called a thief and a robber because you're trying to, to sneak in some other way. And Jesus said in that same chapter that he's the door. He's not the window. He's not the basement. He's not the roof. He's the door. You must enter through and by him. Acts 412, neither is thou their salvation in any other. For there's none the name under heaven given among men whereby 
we must be saved. You can't get your salvation through your pastor, through your bishop, through your elder, through your apostle, through your prophet. You can only get it through Jesus. Or your evangelist. Or your teacher. Because <laughs> I'm going to point you to Christ 1,000% of the time. Because that's who I'm looking for, looking at, and looking to. So, I pray that you have a prosperous week. Until we meet again, Lord willing, I love you. This month was a month of new and to be willing to suffer wrong for the kingdom's sake, to seek the Lord daily, to deny ourselves daily, to pick up our cross daily, and to follow Christ at all costs. That was the purpose for the month of August. The Lord has extended whatever he chooses to do for the month of September. That's what he chooses to do. I'm a servant. I yield. I surrender. I submit. I obey. I love you. I do. I know you may think I come off too strong, angry. It's not angry. It's not strong. It's passion. It's zeal. It's fervency. And it's through the Lord. Because I, I not, me naturally, I have a low, soft tone. When I'm fired up by the Holy Ghost, that's a different tone altogether. So I'm not bossy. Oh, you know what? I'm not done. We got to do the Lord's table. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. I completely. Whew. Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. We're going to do the Lord's table here. I have my. my bread and my wine. I'm going to read first first Corinthians 11. Um, and uh, 11, 22 through 32. It says, what? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise you the church of God, and shame them which have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm going to read. First Corinthians 10 first. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know that looks good. 10. Uh, verse 12 through 22. First Corinthians 10, King James Version 12 through 22. Wherefore, let him that think if he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. 
the cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we be many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to the idol is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. But I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we not, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We have to understand if you know, uh, uh, it's Ezekiel. I don't remember what book right now, but I have covered it. The image of jealousy that provoked to jealousy i ain't trying to provoke the lord to jealousy with a thing a person or a place do we provoke the lord to jealousy are we stronger than he that's the question so i don't eat at everybody's table spiritually or naturally mm. Now we're going to do First Corinthians. I'm going to start where I left off. 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remembrance of me. What you did on the accomplished after the same manner also he took the cup when he has supped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood do this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me Yes, Lord. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let every man examine himself, and so let him that and and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, meaning many have passed on because of not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we 
should not be condemned with the world. To God be the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Repent. Examine yourself. Search yourself. Find the body of the Spirit. And if you find some things that are not right, repent. Get rid of them. With a godly song. That's my prayer and encouragement to you. I don't want anybody. Going to that place of darkness, torment, and torture, in, in fear, in terror. I don't want it because you don't have to go. You don't have to. You don't have to. But if you end up there. You're going with your eyes wide open. But right here, this is our space to repent. It's our time, chance to get it right. To God.